Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'd like to introduce you today to a new employee in Heartbeat Alaska. He's our correspondent, Tony Milford. And today, he brings us a story from the Navajo Nation. The war in Iraq has touched many lives, Native and non-Native. And today, we visit the Navajo Nation as they honor their own. Also, did you know that Navajos were very important in World War II. We'll have that story as well today. I'll be back with a fabulous show right after this. This program was made possible by Coeric Incorporated. Thank you, Coeric, for your generous support. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is also sponsored by the Norton Sound Economic Development Corporation serving the fisheries of the Bering Strait region. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. This program is also brought to you by ASRC Energy Services, a subsidiary of Arctic Slope Regional Corporation. Heartbeat Alaska is also made possible through the support of Norton Sound Health Corporation. The Diné people of the Navajo Nation are sending out their prayers to their loved ones who are fighting for our nation in Iraq. Tony Milford brings us this touching story from Window Rock, Arizona. The risks and reactions faced by U.S. Marines. In a war, um, you know, things happen. No doubt they suffered some serious emotional trauma. We wait for the door to open to see these prisoners of war. Fire came from all sides, 360 degrees. U.S. troops facing significant combat ahead. This is a war. This terrible time of mourning and loss. American bombs dropping very close by. With the war in Iraq taking place, the world has turned its attentions towards the conflict in the East. As Americans fight to liberate a country, thousands of families wait patiently by the television, praying that their sons and daughters come home safely. Seven former American POWs have arrived in friendlier territory. For the Diné people of the Navajo Nation, prayers go out for their own, their sons and daughters, who have been called to leave the safety of their homeland to fight for the safety of their people. As the war escalates, those who oppose the war gather in the streets to demonstrate their opposition. But in Window Rock, Arizona, a different kind of demonstration is taking place. A demonstration of support and a day of prayers for our troops in Iraq. Heartbeat Alaska correspondent Tony Milford of Navajo Nation Television takes us to Window Rock, Arizona for this monumental event. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. This is Tony Melford from the Navajo Nation. Just giving you an update as to what's taking place today, April 6, 2003. Today, behind us is a congregation, a march that's going to be taking place this morning and as well a day of prayer for our men and women who are currently serving overseas in the effort to liberate Iraq. We have men and women who are serving in all branches of the military. And as you can see behind me, there is a congregation of maybe 75 to 100 people 
in support of this effort. And as we take it, there will be many more joining us today. Forward, march! It began early Sunday morning, April 6th, with a prayer circle at the Navajo Nation Museum and ended late that afternoon at the Window Rock Veterans Memorial Park. From the prayer circle, veterans and supporters gathered in the streets where they marched to the park to pray for their troops and to hear words of inspiration from the leaders of the Navajo Nation. prayed for their friends and family serving in Iraq. Prayers for the family of Lori Ann Paestua from the Hopi Nation were prayed as well. Lori Ann Paestua was the first female U.S. soldier to be killed in the war on Iraq, a war that is now closer to home than ever for the Diné people. There was not one person here who wasn't touched by the words of those who spoke today, honoring the soldiers who have gone into battle in the name of peace. Parents and relatives of U.S. soldiers in Iraq had messages for their kin, messages that all shared a common theme of hope. I'm Angela Joe from Kayenta, Arizona, and the picture I'm holding is my son who is now in Baghdad in the middle of the fighting. He's uh, Lance Corporal Emerson D. Joe. I am very um, sad about Lori um, Pestiwa from Tuba City because we were all supporting the family in our prayers and in our thoughts. And when we found out about her yesterday, it was as if we were also um, the parents of her. I would urge all our Navajo people, all our Indian families across the country and everybody across the nation to pray for our children because every one of them, it doesn't matter what culture they're from or what tribe they're from, we are all in this together. His name's Miguel Cortez. Corporal in the Marine Corps. And um, do you have a message to the people and as well as your son? Um, I just would like to tell the mom, all the mom, to be strong because it's really hard. But right now, you know, my heart goes out to all, all the moms out there. I know and understand what they're going through. But right now, we all have to, you know, pray together. They'll be home soon. And any messages from you, sir? I just want to tell the troops to... Um, Go over there and get your job done and come back home because we're all waiting for you. <laughs> my heart goes out to the families and you're still in my prayers. I appreciate and all these veterans supporting the, our troops here. So good luck to you guys and be happy. I have uh, some young ladies here and uh, what they have are uh, support posters. This U.S. Army uh, Patriot, son, brother, father, husband, Private First Class Fritz Clinton. And uh, of course, uh, can I get your names? 
Hi, my name is Trudy. Um, I'm Fritz's sister. Um, Fritz here is also serving with his sister in Kuwait, Rosalind Clinton, private. Uh, we have uh, Fritz and Rosalind's brother, Jonas. He's serving on the USS Wyoming. And Rosalind and Fritz are overseas right now, and we just wanted to show our support and say that our prayers and our thoughts are with you. We're looking forward to seeing you at home. We love you. We miss you, but we know that you are doing a good job. We are here for you. Thank you so much. We're proud of you. And do you have some words? Um, my name is Cheyenne Arviso, and this is my uncle, and that's all I have to say. If you could say something to your uncle right now, what, what would you say? I would say that if I would, I would pray for him to come back and bring him home safe, and that's pretty much all. Okay, and you? Um, my brothers and sisters, uh, I just want to say that we're praying for you, and you will come home. As the ancient songs echoed off the wind-carved rocks of the Arizona desert, prayers of peace ascended toward the heavens. Prayers for protection of our soldiers and prayers for their safe return. In Window Rock, Arizona, I'm Tony Milford, NNTV5, reporting for Heartbeat, Alaska. Have we touched your life? Have we touched your village? You've watched Heartbeat Alaska for years, and now you'll be able to read a book all about Heartbeat Alaska and you. You can be in it. Send your story of your village or how we touched your life to Green at ak.net or the address on the screen. Be part of the book as you've been part of the program. Be part of the Heartbeat Alaska book. Tell us your story. What are some of your fondest memories of Heartbeat Alaska? Jot them down or email us. And don't forget your phone number. On behalf of the, the members of the Navajo Nation Council and the Navajo Nation, I hereby present to the family a per, private first class Lori Piestiwa display of appreciation for the services provided to the United States of America and the Navajo Nation. On April 21, 2003, Lori Paestua was honored by the Navajo Nation at a ceremony where her parents were given a plaque and the Navajo Nation flag in her memory. For the past two weeks, the Paestua family had support from their community as well as from people across the country. And although the memories of the day they learned about their daughter's death will stay with them a long time, it's the support and prayers from their friends and country and the forever memories of Lori that will help comfort them in their time of need. On the night we were informed of our daughter missing in action, um, two gentlemen came from the military. They were dressed in full uniform, knocked on the door. We uh, opened the door, and they were standing there, so we, our world fell out from under our feet. The gentleman informed us that our daughter was missing in action. Um, we asked questions if she was alone, if she was with somebody. They could only tell us that she was missing in action, nothing else. We were very alone at the first, and then with all the support that we had throughout the reservation, throughout the countryside, with all the calls coming in, it made us very strong. It made us so strong that a lot of people couldn't believe that we were in pain, and that uh, because of them, we thank them. We thank you people. We thank everybody out there that has given us the support and helped us along with this pain. And it's uh, and we're thankful because uh, now that she has met everybody's hearts out there, we thank her for being there for them. And because because of her, this world has come a lot closer. Everybody's been so close to each other lately, and that uh, I'm sure this is what, what her plan was when she left us. With the passing of Lori Paestua, 
The Navajo Nations have added yet another name to their list of heroes. The Navajo Nation has played a very special part in the pages of America's history. For it was the co-talkers of the Navajo Nation that were the voices of World War II. And it was the Navajo language that made communications possible for the United States Marines. From 1942 to 1945, the Navajo code talkers were the communications link for the U.S. Marines, transmitting coded messages by phone and radio in their native language, a code that the Japanese never broke. It was only a spoken language. It's not a written language, not a reading language. It was only spoken and understood. Since the Navajo language, or Diné language, is an unwritten language of extreme complexity with different dialects, making it unintelligible to anyone without extensive exposure and training, it proved to be a language that was the foundation for an undecipherable code. The code was already written by the first 29. They had 29 uh, young men joined the Marines, and they are the ones that devised the code. They devised the code by using animal names and based on the English alphabet, the 26 alphabets. Uh, they divided those uh, coded words according to what animals used air, like they live in the sky, mm -hmm. and those animals that live on the land, walk on the land, and animals that live in the water or in the water, on the water. See, that way they divided into three different groups. And all those are assigned to each alphabet. And that's how they devised it. But the first attempt at creating an undecipherable code with only 26 Diné words proved to be premature. After we were taught, we would go outside and set up the radios and talk to each other practice with that coded words. At first, the uh, first 29 only devised 26 words. And uh, that 26 words, we found out. The uh, kids that are in the Marine Corps, all the Anglo kids in the Marine Corps, they're radio men. They help us learn how to operate radio. While we're learning, they listen to us sending these coded words. They memorize all 26 of them. And then we said, hey, if they can memorize that in such a short time, a Japanese will memorize it too. So we added another group of 26 words and another one. 26 words. And then when we memorize all those, we jump around on those different alphabets, and the kids got confused. And then we say, now, this is pretty safe. Diné Indian Samuel So was one of the Navajo code talkers of World War II. At the age of 19, Samuel lied to get into the military which only accepted men 21 years of age and older. I couldn't find a job. I looked all over the place. Finally, I went to a railroad station. I asked for a job there. And the guy that's sitting behind the desk says, sorry, 
we only employ 21 year olds. So I just turned around and start walking out. Before I walked out the door, the guy says, perhaps you come back this afternoon, we may have a job for you. So right there, that gave me hope that I may have a job. So I hung around that station until in the afternoon. At one o'clock sharp, I walked through the door and the guy looked up and said, did you say you're 21 years old? Boy, that really surprised me and stunned me. Without thinking, I said, yeah, 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 I'm 21 years old. He says, uh, you'll have a job with us, sir. Uh, you wait around here this afternoon. So I was 19 years old in the morning. In the afternoon, I was 21. <laughs> That's how come a guy uh, sits at the post office with a tall hat, stripes and stars on his shoes and says, I want you. That's how I got drafted. And I told him I was 21 years old. It's time to pull out the video camera and start getting those Christmas greetings. Each year, Heartbeat Alaska brings you holiday greetings from villages across the state. Would you like to see your village on our Christmas special? Then send us a tape with your village greetings. We can accept VHS, Super VHS, and Mini DV. Send your tape to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska, zip 99518. Christmas is almost here, and we'd love to see you this year on Heartbeat Alaska. Samuel So is just one of the many code talkers who served us in World War II. They served their country using their Navajo language, using it in an undecipherable code. Many of these unsung heroes have played a part that probably most likely would have changed the course of this war and history. It wasn't long after that event that Samuel would find himself dodging bullets and crossfire in the North and South Pacific Islands, eventually finding himself in a foxhole on Iwo Jima. In fact, Samuel would be part of a monumental moment that would go down in the pages of history forever. I took part on, uh, mostly on uh, Iwo Jima, where the famous flag was raised. When it was raised, I intercept the coded message. I was listening to the radio and all of a sudden they came out and said, I, didn't, I missed the first part, but the last part, I heard it and start writing. I had a pad on my strap on my leg to write on, and then I start writing on it, and it says, not not the that means a literal English trans uh, interpretation is sheep's eye is cured. But in my mind, that's not what it meant. So I wrote down Mount Serbachi is secured, and that's what it meant. As soon as I finished writing it, the Marines were in the foxhole and asked me, what's up, Chief? So I just pointed up to the flag. That was the one that was raised in the morning. And they raised another one three hours later, a bigger one so that everybody could see it. But the one that the uh, message came in was the one in the morning there. And that was a message that came in 
Boy, you should have seen the Marines when they saw that. They just got out of the hot foxhole, they just start hollering and dancing. They just disregard the bullets come flying in there. And uh, I caught that one there. And that's why I signed some of those pictures there. Thank you. Signing pictures and shaking hands is a common occurrence for Samuel these days. In fact, Mr. So travels the world sharing his experiences with others. Now recognized as heroes for their outstanding contributions to our nation, the Navajo Code Talkers were long unrecognized because of the classified nature of their code language. It wasn't until 1992 that the Code Talkers were honored at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. For Samuel, it has been an experience that he is proud to have been part of and would gladly do it all again for reasons I think we can all understand. It is justified because a million people and myself are alive. And that is, to me, worth fighting for this country and the future young children of ours. We want them to have the best. Mm -hmm. So like I said in the news interview in a documentary film, if there's another war come, I'll be waiting and ready for it. Thank you everyone for joining us. And before we sign off today, I'd like to send a special greeting to Mr. and Mrs. Paestua and the rest of the family. We here in Alaska have been praying for you and we've been watching as your people have been honoring your daughter. We understand loss and we are with you. We are thinking about you and we will continue to pray for you. From all of us here at Heartbeat Alaska, God bless you, and we'll see you again next week. To purchase a VHS copy of this program, have your credit card number ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or mail $20 check or money order to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska 99518. Ask for the program number listed below.